That was weird. Welcome, welcome <laughs> to the BX. That was really weird. Welcome to the BXG podcast, the podcast where pop culture and nerd culture meet at the nexus of the universe and are ranked 103. 103 on the UK hobbies podcast chart. Not here in the Beautiful. States. That's all right. But over there. And so, you know, we want to thank our UK listeners for making it happen. And uh, as always, I am one of your hosts, Brent Beswick, alongside my co-host, the pride of Fredonia, Greg Filson. Greg, how are you, how are you tonight? I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, things are, you know, a little bit more normal. So we went wine tasting today, just in a local Santa Barbara place. Um, so it was nice. It was relaxing. It's beautiful here today. Um, you know, low 70s, I'd say. One of those crisp, well, it was like crystal clear sky days, too, here in Santa Barbara. So, uh yeah, it was beautiful. Beautiful day. How are you doing, Brenton? I had a we we did another one of those trampoline parks over the weekend. I didn't have the same issue. How many of those did they have out there? A lot. That's crazy. There's well there's 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 the one in Cranberry, there's one in Niles, Ohio, which is within shouting distance. There's one in Butler. Uh there's one in Erie. There may be others, I don't know, but the one in Butler Six. was the one that we went to. And I actually liked it a lot more than the one in Cranberry because it was like way more like open spaces. But I got to tell you about this employee because (laughs) there was a man who loves his job. I'm going to tell you that right now. Now, It's questionable decisions on Mm. his part. Really short khaki shorts. All right. Really pale skin. Mm. And a Mm. mullet, like a, like he chose a mullet, but it was like. Like gelled in the back. Ooh. Well, you got to keep it a little classy. And he was, he was getting after these kids. He had a whistle, and he was he was like a lifeguard. And then they put him in charge of the trampoline dodgeball game, and no one was more excited than than him. None sure. of the combatant, none of the players were as excited. Trampoline as him. dodgeball. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I might be a substitute teacher here because i signed up to do proctoring and you had to do this whole substitute teacher thing for whatever i i but i i took uh gym class is something i would substitute teacher for and it's gonna be all out dodgeball all day all just man i'm gonna be running around i was a substitute gym class teacher and under my watch a kid broke his nose and got a concussion and then I was awesome. never a substitute gym teacher anymore. I strive for at least that. <laughs> yeah. So I have the um, I have the camera just like up a little bit. You should see my setup. It's hilarious. I don't have like any equipment. So it's literally just a bucket of cheese balls and a uh, oatmeal container. And well, that's the webcam just like on top of it. So it's giving me like a nice angle. But I like to look right into your soul, right into your heart. Thanks. What do you see? Uh, just the abyss. Uh, <laughs> in that, in the Millers versus the machines, the uh, the vast of darkness begins, or whatever. <laughs> the dark harvest. The, the yeah. dark harvest begins. The dark harvest. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great movie. Um, sh- which actually brings us to a little bit of housekeeping. BXG Podcast publishes every Friday at 7 a.m. on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and other podcast services around the globe. Official BXG social media accounts, uh, facebook.com slash BXG Podcast, uh, Instagram at BXG Podcast, Twitter at BXG Podcast, uh, Instagram at GTFills at Y2B, YouTube.com, BXG Podcast, uh, Mitchell's versus the Machine, Bad Batch Movie, news uh for the week of may 11th uh what was the other one? Oh, the tom cruise thing yeah yeah what a bum social media scoreboard john john jjk 13 jared l3 uh anthony w3 david s from Carn city 2 ejt1 aaron h1 david s from Carn city Picked up the point for correctly identified a noted bigot racist sexist <laughs> John Rocker uh, was a relief pitcher for the Atlanta Braves. I kind of figured that the big Dave would get that one as he was. He was himself a good baseball player. He played collegiately at, at Slippery Rock. So. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Well, listen, man. Carn City, they're still 
they're using they're using holly branches and and apples you know <laughs> tougher to hit well exactly that's yeah. what i mean yeah his 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 bat was <laughs> carved from the wood of a tree that was struck by lightning you know with uh wonder boy amazing it. what you can do it is amazing what you can do uh we put out a poll uh, listener feedback is tom cruise overrated and i'm going to tell you this debate was hot Hot, hot in the debate. streets. Yeah. It was hot in the streets. Six people voted yes. Seven people voted no. Yes. So there were seven people that were wrong. <laughs> and six people that were right. Oh, I man, just seven. We stand strong. I'm going to tell you that Tom Cruise is going to come up again. Not tonight. Oh, he'll come up. But he's going to come up sooner than you think. And there's going to be... Some sycamore-like shade thrown at him. I can tell you that right now. All right. All right. But that's for down the road. Well, one listener submission, Bob Sacamano, wrote in and he said, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier reminded me of a network TV drama since when did Disney and Marvel start making Blue Bloods? I mean, I I went on and on about this on the pod. It's This was just like watching, you know, Captain America and the Winter Soldier and me, just an extended universe of that, which I I loved. I think they were just going for spy goodness. And, you know, I I haven't watched Blue Bloods, so I don't know. I'm assuming Tom Selleck is in it. Sounds like a Tom Selleck piece of work. Thick stash. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, Blue Bloods must be like the best show on television if it's right up there with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So it's. I don't like scores as noted and I don't like aggregate things, but blue bloods is a 7.6 on IMDb. That's really good. Uh, on that. Falcon and the winter soldier is 7.5. Wow. So there you go. Boom. Cliff <laughs> corrections <laughs> and clarifications. Uh, some of the people uh, we said uh, spider verse for Mitchell's. That is true. It was, some of the people that worked, I tried to find out exactly who, because it wasn't any of the writers or directors or, or any like noted people. So I assume it was the animation team. Uh, but Mitchell's versus the Machines worked on uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And then Lily James, not Lily Collins, is uh, playing Pam Anderson in the Tommy Lee Pam Anderson show. Who knew there were like so. that many Lilies? Uh, you could have told me it was Lily Allen. Right. Yeah. Who knew? And I would have been... Still, yeah. she is strikingly similar to Pam Anderson. It's weird. And then, like, there's a right. whole thing now. Pam Anderson's upset, but what can you do? I'm gonna she, watch. The well, hell she out would of have had show. her. She would have had to have signed to do it. She would have had to sign over her. Oh, I'm sure there's. Yeah, this is probably just whatever. more of a thing to make people watch it, so she gets more money. Yeah, maybe, probably. <laughs> we have a great show tonight. The Baja men are here. <laughs> <laughs> Already. <laughs> nope. Who let the dogs out? Uh, six pack of topics, quick hitters, fun with science, media recommendations. We have some great topics, but we lead with Bad Batch episode number three. Here we go. Uh, the replacements. Clone Force 99 needs some ship repairs as they land on a remote moon in order to work on their ship. A power consuming space monster, Cam's words. Brent's yeah, that son. was my son's. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> steals space some monster. parts. He says the space monster. <laughs> I love it. Uh, steals some parts, and Hunter and Omega need to track her down. Hunter gets incapacitated, and Omega boldly follows the beast into its lair to get the part back. Omega shows she is capable member of the team and retaining the needed part in saving Hunter. Meanwhile, the important story thread of this episode shows Tarkin and Lieutenant Rampart theorizing that troop squads led by clones with a mix of... Uh, Conscripted soldiers would be the most ideal fighting force. Crosshair leads a group of troopers to eliminate the last of Sagara's group. <clears throat> when they arrive, they find only leftover civilians. Crosshair begins to mow down the civilian survivors until one of the concert pro- protests. He reminds the trooper, good soldier, follow orders. And when the trooper does not, Crosshair puts a blaster bolt through his chest. Back on Camino, he is feeling the effects of not being with the rest of 99. Meanwhile, the cloners are realizing they need to improve upon their Django Fett formula. So the thing I really like about this episode is kind of, or yeah, the episode, but kind of the ongoing thing in the series is 
that they're really like fleshing out how we went from the prequel clone army to the empire stormtrooper army kind of as we know it <clears throat> and we kind of see the beginnings of that here um i think it's pretty obvious that at some point crosshair is going to rejoin the team i just think yeah. that that's pretty obvious i mean this is a it's star wars and there might be turn twists and turns but at the end of the day it's a cartoon right so uh, this though like the the story arc of they're on this moon uh it was very reminiscent to empire strikes back where they're having to repair the ship uh the minox are chewing on the power cables they have to go outside with the masks on and shoot you know han and chew shoot them off the ship or whatever it was very reminiscent in that i felt like the monster design was like a little bit too similar to that of the one that was in the previous episode where they yeah. were on that farm. And, but this was the kind of story arc that I felt like was needed um, to flesh out the whole Omega Hunter father daughter thing that was kind of like rushed through in the second episode this was what they needed to do to show that she's a kid. She's going to be part of the team, but also kind of a pain in the ass right. before they went for that. Oh, I'm going to send her away. She can't be, this is no place for a child. Like that whole thing. Like they needed a few episodes like this before they got that. I almost feel like these are like, like the episodes are like out of order. Like this should have been the second episode, the third episode or the second episode should have been the third episode or even further down the line. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I do really like the whole, feel where it's filling in filling in the gaps of between the prequels and the original movies because other than rogue one and a little bit of solo we don't really have that and with rogue one taking place directly before a new hope there's not that much filler i mean there's 20 years worth of lore that they can explore and i like that they're doing it i just want more of it in maybe a more adult setting but what did you think uh, I felt the same way, like, it, you know, what I said last week about the episode is, you know, I know we're setting up plot, and we're setting up plot in this one, too. There's just more action, which I liked, um, really kind of from the get-go. There wasn't too many breaks, and if there was, there was still, like, the plot was evolving. Um, it, the thing I thought was just, when she got her own room at the end, was, like, such a a, a great moment, and I agree with you, like, this could have been further down the line where it shows yeah. that she's part of the team or whatever. Um but it's also one of those things I, I had to tell myself when I'm watching this is like as much as I want it to be like adult Star Wars, it is still cartoon right. Star Wars, like you said. And so yeah. like you do want to keep kids interested. And right. you, even though Star Wars is appealing to kids, you're still kind of playing towards people more probably our age with Star Wars movies. And then with these things, you have to still kind of placate with kids, I guess. I mean, that's that would be my, my thoughts on this. I, I just know that there's like a lot of episodes left and I'm just curious yeah. to see where yeah. we go. They're doing a great job of, like you said, fleshing this out, which I like. I just hope my, my only one concern is that we don't have just like six episodes like we had with Falcon, the winter soldier where you kind of just can bang through stuff. I hope there isn't like a middle part where like a lot of nothing happens to build up. That's my only real concern. This was a good episode. This had good story, story building, good action. Um, you know, anytime you harken back to the original trilogy, that's cool too. And I don't mind right. that. Just don't, you know, like we always say, don't make, you know, make new stuff. You can harken back, but don't make it the same thing. Uh, I also, the thing I thought with this episode too, is I thought it looked really cool. Maybe it was just because there was a lot of darkness or whatever, and they had their mask and everything going yeah, on. Sure. But I thought this was a very visually appealing episode. I thought the th first one was really visually appealing. I thought this one was, I didn't think the second one was really that visually appealing. Uh, but I thought this one kind of hit all the notes and I think it was 27 minutes or something and it flew by. It was a really, really like snappy episode. Yeah. They're really settled on that, you know, settled into that sort of 25 minute area. I yeah. mean, this is, this is, this could be easily shown on network mm. Disney. It's just, you know, this is where we're going as streaming services, et cetera. But um, yeah, I mean, it, the story is interesting and, I just like, you know, like I said, I, I like that they're kind of explaining point A to point B where we haven't really had that before. Um, 
you know, the because it's obvious down the line that those that the Empire troopers are not clones. I, I like that. I think that, that this could be a good vehicle for that. But like I said, I'd like to get more into that with, you know, with some of the live action stuff. There's just there's just so much to do. And they just, you know, I feel like the problem is, is that they would feel obligated to shoehorn certain characters in. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, because these characters were already existing in the clone wars series they they can kind of more easily translate that to its own thing. Um, but you know, I, I enjoy watch, you know, I enjoy watching it. It's not like Mandalorian level by any means, no. but, um, you know, it's definitely, it's a fun watch. I look forward to it every week and it's quick. You know what I mean? It's, do so. you do you think after we're done with this we'll we'll get an immediate like this is what next is next with Star Wars? Well, I know I think Kenobi's next because okay. they they either just finished wrapping uh, filming it or it was like pretty close to or they just started it. I think we we talked about that a couple weeks ago because the whole Ahmad Best rumors and everything. I, and I believe that they've started it. And he's he's gone. Ewan McGregor's done some media tours yeah. to like promote and stuff like that. So I think Kenobi's next. Uh, but hell, I mean, it's already May. So, and I'm pretty sure that they're filming, uh, they're doing either Book of Boba Fett or Mandalorian season three that they're filming it. So, or they're close to filming it. So I think that that's probably what comes next. But definitely Kenobi's going to be the next thing. I'm, I'm, pretty sure but i, I would love to, to know the storyline of like when we know when the next because we know we're going to get another trilogy it's just you know if we're going to get a set <sighs> timeline on that or well the only movie right now that's confirmed is the um patty jenkins mm -hmm. rogue squadron thing right. um and i don't have any clue when that is slated to like 24 maybe i don't know i'd have to do a little bit of research but i can certainly have that in the uh <clears throat> clarifications for next week and i think the reason the reason why i brought this was like maybe it'd be good to not know you know like we went yeah. we went so yeah. long between the first three and then like the second batch and you know yeah. and we were okay with that like you know that was one of those things like maybe it's time to like give disney to time to like figure out what they actually want to do with this next three and let these shows flesh things out and i, I think it'd be well, almost a lot better of the things they they pump the brakes on a lot of things yeah because like the Boba Fett thing was supposed to be a movie. And then I think that they, they saw a, the success of Mandalorian and B that people were like lukewarm at best on the sequel trilogy. And they thought dial this back. Let's make it a TV show. Right. You know what I mean? So, you know, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, I think that that star Wars maybe lives on the small screen right now. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. And I'm going to, and I'm, when we get further down the line and uh, talk about another topic, I'm going to be belligerent about that point, but <laughs> that's, that's for later. So number two, the rock and roll hall of fame class of 2021 has been announced. Uh, one of the most diverse classes in the history of the hall will be inducted Saturday, October 30, 30, 30th. I think it's the 31st. And I mistyped that uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, the requirement for induction is that the first relief release from the artist must be 25 years prior to the induction year. Carol King, Jay Z, the Foo Fighters, the Go Go's, Tina Turner, LL Cool J, Randy Rhodes, Billy Preston, Kraftwerk, among others, will be inducted. It is worth noting that Warren, Ohio native Dave Grohl will be now be a second time member of the Hall with the Foo Fighters, as well as being the drummer for Nirvana. I, I it's kind of crazy when you just like read you're like Carol King and then Jay Z. Uh, I was surprised Carol King actually wasn't in earlier. I mean, mm. or that, Tina Turner. Yeah, and Tina Turner. That one, I mean, that one kind yeah, of Yeah, Tina Turner is like that's pretty crazy to me. I'm the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's like always kind of weird to me every year. Always like I can't believe this person wasn't in earlier. I mean, and they always put so many people in, so I don't even know. I actually don't know how like they put people in. I I don't disagree with anybody that have been here. I mean, I would for the most part, I'm actually like surprised. The older the older groups slash people were just weren't in earlier, but yeah. um, you know I think the biggest name on this list to me would be you know Jay Z and Foo Fighters personally. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's sure. cool. Um, it'll be. I just don't understand how <laughs> that they can like. I'm not arguing that they shouldn't be in some type of Hall of Fame, right? But calling it the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but then also including like. 
Tina Turner and Jay Z is <laughs> weird to me because they're not rock and roll. You know what I mean? Like, right. like call it the Music Hall of Fame. I don't have a problem with it. And I, it's just devil's advocate, you know what I mean? Because, like, they're all very deserving of being honored in some way in some Hall of Fame somewhere. You know what I mean? But to call it the Rock and Roll... Like, I always have a problem with that. It's like, oh, it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, who's in it? It's, like, Madonna? Like, <laughs> she's not rock. I, I almost look at it is when you think of, like, the way Rock and Roll started is, like, Elvis was Rock and Roll. Sure. And right. then the Beatles are Rock and Roll. Led yeah. Zepp- and so, like, the way that rock and roll has evolved over the years, to call it the Music Hall of Fame, I almost think they don't call it that because it just sounds so boring. And rock yeah, and roll just sounds yeah. cooler at the right. end of the day. Um, There's think, nothing really- about Jay-Z that's rock and roll unless it's rolling crack rocks down the street. <laughs> right. Uh, didn't he do the Linkin Park, like, Okay, mix? <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> But yeah, right. I mean, going but going yeah, on like with other that. things. You know, I, I think Jay Z probably wants to forget about that. Maybe I, I remember that being maybe. like very pop. I don't really. I think I listened to it once. Very was, popular. Yeah, very popular at the time. Uh, yeah. But y- you know, it, I <laughs> the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to me is almost like the the Basketball Hall of Fame though. It's like everybody eventually everybody gets, in, gets it. in. Everybody yeah. eventually gets in. Yeah. Uh, whether they, I guess, deserve it or not. And with this We're one, looking I... at you, Tracy McGrady. <laughs> wow. Make it out of the first round of the playoffs. That should be a requirement to get into the Basketball Hall of Fame. There should be something. The I, there has, there <laughs> should be a requirement. And... That's the thing is, like, baseball, super exclusive. Super hard. Like, super hard to get in. Yep. Like, there's, there's definitely guys that are not in the Baseball Hall of Fame that should be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Yeah the steroid era you know what i mean like that's a whole nother topic for another day but nfl still pretty exclusive yeah but mostly if you were a primetime player you're getting in the nba it's like well it's not just the nba might, it's the basketball hall of fame so it's like it's literally basketball if hall of fame if you're associated yeah. with basketball at all it's like you're in yeah <laughs> it should be like it's just like the hall of of like pretty good right well, you it's know like what I mean? Bill Simmons had like the tier in his book and like yeah, there should right. be different tiers at the basketball Hall of fame. And I a hundred percent agree. Like, yeah, sure. You know, it's, it's just weird to me. Like when you say that, it's like Michael Jordan, and Tracy McGrady are in the exact same hall of fame. Like, and yeah. not that we're not trying to, I'm just saying that's a good example. Like somebody that won right. six times out of six and then also Tracy yeah. McGrady. Good basketball Great score. player. Could really Great score. score. Yeah. Yep, never made it out of the first round. Never made it out of the first round. Same place as yeah. Michael Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there anybody in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that you think should be in that, you know, has meets your requirements? Because I honestly, I thought about it. I can't I don't think of know. Anything. I've never been there. Really? I haven't just, either. You know, yeah. it's only an hour and a half away. And we've talked about going there loads of times. We just never do. I don't know. Uh, I think that, like, is Green Day in? I think so. I, yeah, I think I they got like in. like that, that would be... Two or three years ago. That's like... Because now it's like the 25-year thing. You're looking at, at people who like were like mid-90s. You know what I mean? Limp Biscuit, probably. They should have their own wing. <laughs> Are they 25 years yet? They're close. Um, They're close. Is there anybody in the last 10 you. years that you think like 15 years down the road will we think will be in? Well... Since it's a not really rock and roll thing, mm-hmm. it could be any music thing. I mean, Kendrick for sure. Yeah, Kendrick Lamar uh, for from hip hop. Uh, Kanye. Um, yeah. I think those are locks. Uh, in terms of like rock music, I don't, I don't listen to like. There's not a like the Strokes. I guess I was that was gonna be my thing. Like Maybe. the Strokes I will mean, probably get in. Yeah, it's like it's weird. Like rock music anymore is weird. Um, I mean, Timberlake's a, a lock. Mm-hmm. He Gaga. might be a double. He, he might be a double lock with In Sync. Yeah, that's true. Uh, maybe. I, I mean, yeah. but he's definitely in on his own. Right. Um, Britney is probably yeah. a lock. Should be. She's probably a few more years away. 1999 so 2024 yeah. four yeah 24 um other than that like i can't like off the top of my head i mean you could get into like some of the metal stuff like you, the the argument could probably be made for like slipknot Mastodon. um 
maybe not so much Mastodon. <laughs> um, My old workout jam. I'm trying to think of uh, like Incubus. Incubus. Oh yeah, Incubus is yeah. is definitely if they should be in if they're not already. I'm not sure if they if they're in the 25 year. I don't think they're in the 25 realm. yet. They're close. I don't know, man. I think that some of the early like like Blink 182 maybe. Oh yeah, Blink um, would be fun just to see if all three guys actually show up together. I'm looking up. Are you looking it up? I'm looking it up. Incubus yeah. first album, first album. Incubus's first album was uh, Fungus Among Us. They've been literally active since 1991, but uh, yeah, Fungus Among Us was 1995, so they're good to oh, go. So they are good. They to might go. have. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what's on there. Not a lot of great stuff, but that's not really what matters. It's everything after that, right? Yeah, I mean, other than that, I don't really, you know, Kid Rock. My name is Kid. <laughs> Cowboy. All right. I think that's I mean, probably... what, a, what a world that we went that, that we live in that we we went from Kid Rock singing, you know, Cowboy and Ball at the Ball to doing duets with Cheryl Crow. That is crazy. What a world we live what in. What a world. Uh, we'll we'll move on from that um, and touch on uh, something that probably should just not happen but anyhow um it was what says lord of the Rings series needs to appeal to a giant worldwide audience you think um as we covered in a recent episode the first season of the show will have the highest budget for a season of television ever at 465 million dollars amazon studios chief jennifer salky told the hollywood reporter they are making an investment to fill the gap left by game of thrones in the event tv format uh, duh you got to do something Listen, here. I, I, I'm going to tell you what. The uh, the only thing that's going to survive this nuclear blast is is from this bomb that's coming is going to be cockroaches and Kyle from the challenge. That's it. It's so because this thing is going to it's going to it's going to detonate like a nuclear I, war ahead. I love that they're already like prepping for it. Like she's like, well, yeah. we yeah. know it has to be a worldwide thing, or this is a disaster for us. And they're like, their excuse was like, well, Knives Out is doing Knives this out for two movies. For two movies, two yeah. movies. Uh, yeah, they're this is it's like I'm kind of intrigued to watch it, and maybe this is their. Well, end I'm gonna game. watch it. Maybe this is their end game now, just because it's gonna be such a disaster. It's gonna be so uh, just too much. It's gonna be too much I right can't. from the very beginning. The difference between this and Game of Thrones was Game of Thrones competition for even mind share was basically The Walking Dead, the last few seasons of Sons of Anarchy, the last few seasons of Breaking Bad, and that's it. And the mind share competition for this Amazon thing is going to be the Game of Thrones prequel series. Anything that's coming out on Disney, anything that Netflix has, any other, you know, big shows that are going to be on HBO Max or Netflix. I mean, Stranger Things. Like, there's just so much more competition now than there was with Game of Thrones. You know, Amazon's got fuck you money anyway, so right. it really doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't actually that, matter. That they're spending all this this money on this. It, it, it literally makes no difference. Forty four hundred sixty five million dollars to Amazon is just a drop in the bucket. So it's not like they could like this could totally tank and it won't make a difference on their bottom line because, you know, people are buying toilet paper and everything from them. So it's not like a big deal in terms of that, but it's just going to be really funny if this thing sucks. It's going to be really like that's the thing is it's just going to be funny. Right. If this if this isn't good, it's going to be funny. Yeah. Like, and we're all going to be, you know, the joke's going to be on them, but the joke's going to be on us because <laughs> it's, they still have so much money. Yeah. They're like, whatever. We threw this in there and here comes another thing that you'll watch and we'll make money on. And we didn't right. actually spend money yeah. on it to develop it. So it is just crazy right. though, that you like just this, we live in a world and you know, just another thing where somebody, somebody can just throw money at a company can throw money like this and actually admit before it happens that this is probably going to be bad, but we're okay because whatever. Just as a comparison, the first season um, of The Boys, which I would argue is 
Amazon's best show. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that is more popular uh, than the boys. 72 million. So, you know, I'm not great with math, but I feel like that's ballpark 390 million less. And the boys is like, I was talking to some guys about it today. Like the boys is, it's awesome. And I don't know. I I just, you know, money doesn't solve everything and they're just throwing, they're throwing a lot of money. And the other thing I'll just add about Game of Thrones and, you know, I like to find whatever, but it was also like something totally different. And, you know, I was based on the book at the time. It was just such a new thing. These are no longer new things. Right. Well, Lord of the Rings hasn't been new in 25 years. Right. So it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, is any, was anybody clamoring for this? No. So I don't think, I don't think so. So that's sort of the funny thing to me, but you throw that kind of money around for something that no one seems to be that excited about. Yeah, 60 million. And I know that we brought that up at one point, but the rehash uh, uh, season one of Game of Thrones, 60 million. So again, <laughs> what are they spending it on? <laughs> That's what I don't understand. I, I, gold rivers. I, I guess <laughs> it's going to be, I don't know. It's going to be just, it better be the best television show ever. Yeah, it better be. For that price tag. Like, no (laughs) joke, man. It better be the best thing ever. Uh, Now, moving on to the segment that I am legitimately excited for. Me too. And I wasn't that excited until today. Now I'm excited. So, Walmart and Target are suspending (laughs) their sales of trading cards due to safety concerns as fights have broken out in, in a Wisconsin Target parking lot. Last month in Brunswick, Maine, $20,000 in sports trading cards were stolen and trading cards have seen a massive boom in the last year. In January, a Pokemon TCG booster box sold at auction for $408,000. Somebody pulled a gun on somebody in Wisconsin over Pokemon cards, I believe. So to celebrate Walmart and Target, no longer selling uh, Pokemon and uh, sports trading cards. We are, and I would also say to shamelessly try to drive viewers to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have some Pokemon cards packs that we're going to open. Here's mine. There we go. Mine are uh, Sword and Shield. Sword, some sword. would say. Poke- like card pack opening videos are insanely popular. Yeah, for some packs. Reason. Like I'm not... 100% sure why. Uh, but this is going to be our first of one. It's not going to be the first of many. It's going to be the first of one. We're not going to open um, up some baseball cards, see if we can get a Shohei Otani here. Right. Uh, no, we're not going to do that, Shohei Otani. That's um, good. He's. Uh, whatever. <laughs> he's fine. I don't. I, I, but they're not good. No, so, they're not good. It's a bummer. You know, and the Angels are... out six to eight weeks. We're, 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 six we're opening eight. up cards. Mine are from We Japan. are opening up cards. Just real quick. Yeah. Uh, tri- tribe up 5-1 on the nice. on the Angels. They're killing so, it. Yeah. Well, they just lost four in a row, but neither here nor there. Jose got his home run pitch. Anyway. <laughs> now, I just want to inform the viewer slash listener that I have no idea. Me either. And I think that that's... No idea. Honestly... I, Honestly, I, I, that's going to be three quarters of the fun. Oh, yeah. I'm so. excited. And mine are from Japan. They're from uh, our comic book store and count. It's actually really great. Oh, um, that was ever, the other thing was I wanted ever, to say, where where did you get yours? We'll do we'll like plug them on social media. Uh, Metro uh-huh. uh, Comics here in Santa Barbara. Great store. I mean, if you're ever out here renting, that's where I'll take it because it's insane. They have like, yeah. obviously, it says here for sale in Japan only. Well, I'm not in Japan and I have these cards. Um, Wild. It was weird. Like I went and grabbed them, and the guy's like, "You know, those are uh, Japan cards." And I was like, "I don't care." I go, "My buddy and I are doing a segment for our podcast, and it'll just make it better." Right. So, so um, mine came from Bell's Comics and Cards here in Grove. Oh City, yeah, North Bell's Pennsylvania. Great. Uh, in my opinion, uh, dollar for dollar, dollar for dollar, the best comic book store like in the area. 
um, you know, from from I would say from Erie the whole way down to Pittsburgh. I think it's I think it's the best. Uh, it's really good. You know, big plug for them um, for having these cards. So this is the thing: is obviously you know Walmart, Target, as of May fourteenth, no longer selling these cards. Uh, I went to I was at a Target and a Walmart on those days, and they were plumb out of of everything. Uh, they just completely took them off the shelves. So if you're looking to get these, go buy these in like a physical thing. Um, comic book stores, card shops, that thing, that sort of thing is going to be uh, where where you where you get them. So <clears throat> I'm going to pop. I'm going to pop one of mine. I'm going to pop the first All one right. here, and we'll just take turns. Sounds so fun. Pokemon.com. Got to catch them all. Got to catch them all. Indeed. I can't. I, I couldn't tell you the last time I opened a pack of cards of anything. Oh no, I have no. It's idea. probably been twenty years, if not more. Yeah, twenty sounds about right. So, all right. So, I got some <laughs> got some, some different cards. stuff. I got some stuff <laughs> here. I got this. How many thing. cards do you get in your pack? I think uh, I get five. I got I don't uh, know. one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I got eleven cards wow. in okay, one pack. You got way more than I did. Uh, I got a peach, Pachirisu. Sure. Uh, so I don't know what any of these statistics mean. He's got seventy hit points. Find a friend. Okay, I'll give it to you right there. All right. Beautiful. Looks good. All right. Indeed. Is that Iron Ma Man? Uh, this is Mindfu. Oh, okay. And I'll see if I can get him a little closer here. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's is got the foo. Yeah, he's got 60 hit points, and he's got the double the double stab attack. He's just, well, a, yeah. basic, he's just a little basic guy there. It's hard to tell. Yeah. A little, a little basic. 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 A, little, a little basic white guy. <laughs> um, Baltoy. Ooh. All right. Ooh, he's a self-destructor. He's also got 60. He's also a, just a little basic bitch. He probably i'm telling you this guy right here right here yeah. this guy loves pumpkin spice around halloween time lattes he does. yeah he's just oh, basic yeah. pumpkin just everything basic guy. pumpkin everything mr mime galarian mr mime he's got pound and uh 80 80 hit points he looks like he's got some pound if you know what i mean he does have some 80 hit points uh, oh i like this guy fomantis yeah, continuous this is my guy. continuous slash yeah, 60 hit sure. points. Just another basic bitch. Uh, oh, man, Remor I mean, not a basic. Right. Remoraid. Uh, 60 hit points water gun. Galarian Slowbro. Which, okay. uh, that's... He's stage one, so I don't know if that's better or... You can write in. You know, let us yeah, know. Yeah, write leave, in. Leave, let, leave, us let us know in the comments. Un, unhinged Hammer. Yes. I know a couple guys with some unhinged numbers. 130 hit points. We got, some, oh. we got, an, en we got an energy card. Okay. Uh, more Peko, 80. Do you, do you eat the energy cards? I don't. Fuck, man. I don't know. I think we're supposed to we get the tool jammer. That looks like a pack of fries. As long as the Pokemon this card is attached to is in the active spot, Pokemon tools attached to your opponent's active Pokemon have no effect except for tool jammer i just want to remind everyone that the pokemon games are awesome and it's the cards and the cartoons that ruined it for the rest of us finally uh, 110 i got the bruxish he's got bite yeah. and surf he looks like a fish he looks like a like if lady gaga was a fish this would sure. be this would be maybe him. okay so i'm gonna open go. up that's where we're at so i had the one you're not gonna be able to read any of this stuff no no um up, there's numbers involved, so I might be able to figure it out. So um, I'm going to open up the Pikachu one because I know that character. And let's see. We're dig deep. Like I said, I have no, I, we have no idea what we're doing here. No idea. No and idea these whatsoever. packs, they're a yeah, lot harder tough. to open than the old, the old tops yeah. back in the day. My yeah. goodness. Indeed. What is going on here? All right, here we go. All right. So... Um, <clears throat> Kenichiwa. <laughs> Everyone. Holy Amateur smokes. Hour. Holy cow. I have what I think is a basic guy. He's a little a little fox character. Oh man, what does he the looks fox cool. say? 
I, what does the fox say? I, it looks like he has got two stars and um, 70 hit points. There you go. So that's something. These cards are smaller than I thought. That's what she said. Um, and then I got this character that is a fish. He's a fish. So he has 60 hit points because mm. I can't. He's not. Because you, you don't speak or read Japanese. Right. So yeah. he's fun. I like this. I like it. It's all in Japanese. I like I have no idea what's going on. But I wouldn't have any idea what's going on if this was in English. Um, <laughs> you know? True Holy story. cow. 100 hit points. Because, well, this guy definitely would Ooh, have 100 man. hit points. Look at that guy. His name is, I don't know. But he has okay. two stars and then three stars. And he has a little, like, guy up in the corner by his basicness. The, uh, if you can tell. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but 100 hit points. I love that hit points are like English, right? Um, and then I have a trainer's card. Um, it's this lady, um, and she looks like she would train you because she's. <laughs> uh, beyond that, I don't know what that means. There's no hit points. What kind of montage um, do you think you get with her? Oh, you're getting a nice running montage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely a like a lot of yeah lot she's of definitely going sh like short sleeve sweatshirt in her run and then I have this crazy card that has 310 hit points look at this whoa look at that that's uh, that's gotta be cool it's a big mushroom no the guy is like a little laser guy I feel like this card may be something it might be 310 hit points it feels different like ooh and it is shiny this may be a thing. A lot of stuff that I have no idea what's going on, but 310 right. <clears throat> hit points? That seems like I win a lot of things. I think that you 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 definitely have more than anything that I have. 310 hit points. I am excited. See if I can sell that thing on eBay. There you go. 310 All right. hit points. I've already opened pack two. I, I opened oh, okay. it kind of while, while you were... Going I can't believe I have 310 hit it. points. So, <clears throat> so I opened it. So I have this one looks this one looks gnarly. Single strike, 90 hit points. Powerful vice, piercing strike. It's it's Mawile. Mawile. I think that's how you say that. I got a Cherubi. Yeah. It looks real janky. There's nothing going on. It's like uh, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Cherry. This is yeah. This is this is like the uh, this is like that that uh, janky elimination that Fessy easily would have won that he yes. decided not to participate in. I got another Pachirisu. You can go ahead and skip him. Uh, Chamiko. That's fun to say. Like uh, oh, what's he say in Elf? Whoops. Amateur hour over here. <laughs> Ooh, Francisco. That's fun to say. Francisco. Francisco. Okay. Let's see what else. There's my chair. Um, Horsia. I've caught a few of these in Pokemon Go, so I know about this guy. Here's a, here's a stage one Firo. I've also caught some of him. This one looks, this one looks cool. It's got different... Oh, that's cool. Cricketune. It's got like a... Um, I like him. It feels... The card feels different. Isn't it weird? Yeah. Like that 310 card I yeah. had feels different. Yeah, here's another one. <clears throat> I got a... Uh, Haunchcrow. Haunchcrow. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds Spanish. It does. Energy card. I got another one of these Lady Gaga fish. And then I have the Rapid Strike Carnivine. There it Whoa. is. So, those are my two packs. I'm trying to figure out if my card's worth anything. How are you going to type it in? You don't speak Japanese. I'm um, just seeing if, like, hit points. 380 hit points? Yeah. 380 hit points. 310 hit points. Whatever. 310. I just wouldn't even know. I'm right. confident that, that none of these are worth anything. Even my 310? Especially that one. Especially that one, worth yeah. the least. I don't know. It feels like 310 is a lot of hit points. I'm All right, here up, we go. I'm going to look up this cool-looking one that I have. 
Ooh. All right, what do you got? All right, all right. I got a uh, little little puffin guy. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, yeah I like that guy. There That's he cute. is. He Seventy is cute hit points. Fella. That's cute. I'd like to know what his attack is. Um, I feel like I've seen this guy in. It's weird to me that some of these things are in English. Right. And then, but this guy that I've seen before. Yeah. You know, just Pokemon stuff. Yeah. Um, 50 hit points. Yeah, very low. It's too, he's too big bottom. So he's not going to be able to, I got an energy card. So that's a cool mm. looking energy card. I don't know what that means. Right. And then, uh, I got a trainer card that is just balls. <laughs> so. Yeah, it is. Just balls. Uh, and then, yeah, this, this pack was disappointing. I got this guy that looks like a, like a, what was the name? The, uh, the battle toads. He looks like a battle toad. Ooh, kind of. Hundred hit points. Yeah, hundred yeah. hit points. So, um, I'm glad I went with the Japanese ones because even though I didn't know their names and know nothing about them, I feel like I still know about the same. Right. <laughs> and I have this 310 hit point card. Yeah. That looks and feels different. Right. It's very shiny. I'm looking up the uh, the the weird looking the weird feeling one that I have is worth like five bucks on eBay. Nice. So there's that. I don't think I have any other. I think that was really the only one. I think so. Pokemon cards. Pokemon and cards. Yeah. We opened them up. Two packs each. Mine were in English. I don't know what they mean. Greg's were in Japanese. He doesn't know what they mean. <laughs> Either way, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun because I that's 310. If anybody knows, real quick, I'm gonna go right back up there. Let us know if you want this. I'll sell it to you for a. There you go. A pretty penny. Facebook Marketplace. There you go. Or whatever, cash out. Yeah. Yep. Fund our next opening. (laughs) There we go. Maybe we'll do some basketball cards next. Uh, number five, the MTV Movie and TV Awards were held this past weekend, and some of the winners are some BXG favorites. Anthony Mackie won Best Hero for Falcon, and the Winter Soldier, Elizabeth Olsen, won for Best Performance in a Show as Wanda in WandaVision, Catherine Hahn won for Best Villain as Agatha Har- Harkness in WandaVision, and Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman won Best Performance in a Movie for his role in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Leave it to MTV to actually get these things right. No. No, nope. no, wrong. I mean, the Chadwick Boseman thing is fine. Uh, that's what I meant. Was that and, basically that? Yeah, yeah, and and the Catherine Hahn thing was fine. Um, I didn't really care for a lot of the other, like best show was, I think Falcon and the Winter. Like the Mandalorian wasn't even nominated. I'm going to tell that's you. Crazy. Here's what I'm going to say. Here's what I'm going to say. Okay. We do this show every week. We talk about Star Wars, Marvel, whatever else, right? But for me, it will always come back to Star Wars. That's my thing. That's the thing that I love more than anything, right? And, you know, we've had the debate. Are you even Star Wars fans? You like less than 50% of blah, 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 blah. The Mandalorian's great. It was nominated for Best TV Show. Like at real award shows, not right. at the music television awards <laughs> that don't even play music. With that being said, Pedro Pascal, not the winner for uh, best um, hero, was silly to me. Uh, or it could have gone to Jack Jack Quaid for the boys. Um, the uh, the best performance in a show. Whatever. I mean, she was great. Uh, Elizabeth also, excuse me, was great. Um, I had no issues with that. Best show. Oh. Best duo in a show was um, Sebastian Stan and, and Anthony Mackie. Again, should have been Pedro Pascal and, and Grogu. But I. Yeah, I don't understand. It's, so, what it's just like really frustrating to me because like. I love Marvel and I love Marvel properties and. You know, the one thing that we've said kind of a lot is is they've never done anything bad. Everything is at least 
like good to pretty like i would say everything is at least average to pretty good with some things that are objectively great Mm -hmm. but as we said at the end of the the falcon and the winter soldier um season finale when we kind of wrapped that up here a couple weeks ago to me falcon and the winter soldier was like a seven ish WandaVision a nine and then Mandalorian easily a 10. Neither of those shows are as good as the Mandalorian. Not even close, not even close. So I think, I guess the MTV thing, it's very like in the moment and that's what's in the moment right now is WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Mandalorian's old news, but Mandalorian's better than those things. I'm sorry. No, I agree. I mean, I Love the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Mandalorian is just a better show. I definitely don't disagree with you. Mandalorian's I, I mean, not reminding anyone of Blue Bloods. No. No, it isn't. I am still shocked by that. But like I said, that must be a great show. Um, I, I mostly just... I did it mostly because, like, finally, at least Chadwick Boseman got something. Well, he won the Golden Globe. I know, but the Golden Globe's just... To me, the Golden Globe's just as silly as the MTV They're movie. They're all silly. And TV. They're all silly. But They're all silly. You know, uh, I I just, I guess this was a two-night event. I worked both those nights and just watched, like, clips here and there of everything. My favorite was Scarlett Johansson accepting, like, a Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah. And then Colin Jost poured slime over her. And she got, she's like, this is the MTV one. This is not effing Nickelodeon. Right. And he's like, oh, yeah. I like that. Even though, obviously, yeah. it was staged and everything. But I thought that was funny. Um, that was a good little skit. It is weird to me, like, and I'm not going to go to the MTV doesn't play music anymore. I understand why they don't, um, just for whatever I, reason. I, I don't. Enlighten me. Well, because they make money off of all these, like, shows like this. With it's Like, I don't, I don't know. And you can get your videos, you know, on YouTube, on YouTube. and all yeah. that stuff like that. That's kind of changed the game. But it is sort of funny to me, like, how big this has become where it's, like, two nights. Like, is it something? Wholly it probably, unnecessary. It probably Just gets good enough ratings that they could do this too. Like there must be a little bit of a calling out there, and it's for younger people too. I mean, like they have the best kiss and stuff like that. But it's it's still a whole, like it's still relevant enough that it'll show up in my feed for like you know e news or whatever. Like so and so one, it, it's somehow that relevant. So good for them keeping going, and I'm glad that. Uh, my thing was uh, the thing I was happiest about was Elizabeth Olsen winning, just because I yeah, said sure. she's so good in this show, and like maybe yeah. this, you know, maybe somebody out there. Was, I just want her to get nominated for an Emmy. That's all I want. Right. That's all I want. Get her nominated for an Emmy. This is the push. Uh, yeah, I don't think for me. No, I mean like the, I'm personally pushing. MTV. I'm oh, okay. just meant for me to personally push, and I have this right. 310 hit point Pokemon card that I'm willing to give to someone. If they get Elizabeth Olsen, and by give I mean sell, but to get her nominated for an Emmy, so I'm like, I can't believe I was through. Another just... another straight up sham was um, RuPaul <laughs> winning best reality host over our boy TJ Lavin. Just absolute blasphemy. Uh, the RuPaul show is pretty great though. TJ Lavin, well, they're both legends. Is great. TJ's They're both great. great. They're yeah, both great. I don't great. know. Uh, does RuPaul hate quitters? Yeah. I don't. Does RuPaul does hate quitters? Is RuPaul a man or a woman? I'm not being. It's, it's a man. Okay. Who's drag queen? Does does RuPaul hate? Yeah. Does he hate quitters? Yeah. Because nobody hates him as much as TJ. No, that's true. Yeah, that's true. You couldn't pay me actual like American currency to watch RuPaul's Drag Race. It's pretty funny. I like. I don't watch it actively, but I've watched it here and there. It's pretty. Funny. If somebody, if somebody came to us and said, uh, "We guarantee you a listener bump, and we're going to fund you. We're each going to give you five grand to watch and review uh, RuPaul's um, Drag Race for your podcast and review that on a weekly basis," I would say, "Hey, man, Indy's where it's at." I would take the five thousand dollars, but. I threw um, the Pokemon cards at the wrong thing. I can't. Wrong I camera. can't stop holding the cards because I've yeah, been so either. long since I've done this. Right here. <laughs> it's just like I keep just going back to the cards and just like this is a fun. This is fun. Yeah. But uh, three hundred ten yeah. hit points. All right. So on to uh, our Fira. sixth topic: movie wrap up. 
<laughs> an yeah. action sequence in Fast 9 involving an airplane was dreamed up by a nine-year-old, which tells you everything you need to know about the state of the Fast franchise. Seems a little old, actually. I thought I'd be a younger <laughs> child. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just, just I Fast and Furious and Fall. Yeah, Fast. Can't wait. That's gonna Can't be wait for Fast and Furious Fall. It's gonna be incredible. It's, uh, I I <laughs> wish we I almost wish we could jump straight to it. Uh, I like summer. Um, Henry Cavill and Millie Bobby Brown will reunite for Enola Holmes too. No word <laughs> on if. Brown will be on the verge of tears for the entire picture. I can tell you that um, based on on things that I've watched and people I know, mainly her, there will be her. She will be on the verge of tears for most of the, the filming. That was not a good movie. So I was very surprised that um, when I saw this, I didn't finish Did it, it. Make money. Did it make the money? It was Netflix. Right. So so I don't know how that works. I mean, I guess I don't know. how. Yeah, I don't know how that works. I guess they go off of total streams or whatever. Yeah. But I didn't. Uh, I couldn't finish it. And I finished next everything. Next one, Henry Cavill will uh, turn into Superman. Z- I didn't be. put it in here, but Zack Snyder's talking too much. He's doing the Ray Fisher he thing. Is, he is. Calm down, Zack. Yeah, he is everywhere. He's just like, I. oh man, it's a good thing he's not a cabinet member because he's just spilling state secrets everywhere. He's going nuts. He really is. Um, Leslie Odom Jr., Catherine Hahn, and Janelle Monet joined the cast of Knives Out too. And I, I'm also in it. I found out they called me today. Yep. I'm in it. I figured. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Leslie Odom thing was like just added. Yeah, it just happened. Like, to, like um, an hour, like two hours before we did yeah. this. Yeah. Yep. Um, as long as he sings, as long as he yeah, sings. he's a good singer. Yeah. Great singer. Uh. Shang-Chi will have a 45-day theatrical release exclusivity. That's yeah, cool. so it'll be th- 45 days before it comes to anything minimum. I'm surprised that, like, I mean, at this point where we're at, I mean, theaters will probably be pretty open at that point. Um, yeah, like, I just... I mean, they're all set. Do, they, they're doing this now to, like, make sure they seem like they're in the protocol, and I get that, and I'm, you know, I'm for it. I'm not going anywhere right now that's inside, and doing stuff the uh the thing is with that is like i just fear like with the whole cdc not to get too political or whatever but i fear that them saying okay if you're fully vaccinated you can go maskless you know minus yeah. these you know handful of scenarios or whatever well they're not making people carrying around a sign that says yes i'm vaccine no i'm not i mean i know everybody got the cards or whatever but it's not like they're it's not like the dude at Walmart's going to say, let me see your vaccine card. So these people who are anti-vaxxers are just going to be like, fuck it. I'm yeah. not wearing one oh, either. Yeah. You know, there's already vaccine like hesitancy amongst like certain demographics. And I don't think that this is going to do anything to alleviate that. And my fear is that despite the fact that the rollout seems to be going well and numbers seems to be dropping that if enough people who are not vaccinated say, you know, you can't force me to get a vaccine, so I'm not going to follow these protocols, that it's just going to wind up, we're going to be right back to square one. I'm very afraid of that. Um, I Because I straight up just don't trust people. You know what I mean? <clears throat> no, Which, nor should If we. anything over the, la- over the course of the last, you know, 10 years have taught us is probably don't trust anyone. Oh, I was going to say the history it's, of time, but. Well, <laughs> more specifically, but yes. Someone I do trust. Michael Jordan will appear in Space Jam 2, but not in a way we're expecting, according to Don Cheadle. Who is it that you trust? Is it Don Michael Cheadle? Jordan. Oh, okay. Michael Jordan. I think, what's your prediction for this? Uh, he's going to be like a waiter or something. I don't know. There's something like he's just like going to show up as something that isn't basketball related. Do you and, know what I think would be amazing? It's probably not going to be the thing, but what I think would be just absolutely amazing is what if he was the bad guy? That would be incredible. Like if he was like fully like cartoon Michael Jordan and everything, yes. and he was just like the bad guy. Or more likely what may happen is LeBron's going to be like, oh man, I don't think I can do this. And then like he's going to show up and be like, 
you can. I've done it before. Or some, you know, some nonsense yeah, like that. Yeah. You know. Or maybe like, like he's just golfing in the background. That'd be fine too. Yeah. If he's I, in it, I'm down. I mean, I'm down either way, but that's I'm when just, I took things personally. Yeah, maybe that's yeah. it. He just shows like, it's not even actually a film. It's just from there. Yeah. LeBron. LeBron starts the movie, and then it just goes to that clip, and that's when I took right. things personally. Yeah, love that. Um, just yeah. never get too much of it. Um, <laughs> Warner Media merging with Discovery for forty three billion dollars as of now. No changes to Discovery Plus or HBO Max. Yeah. 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 Business Can they just merger. be one network? AT and T uh, was the former owner of Warner Media, and they just offloaded them. Yeah. So these companies, I, so just, just they do whatever. what they. Uh, they're going to fold. Discovery Plus and, and HBO Max eventually will fold into one thing. Yeah, they should. And I don't know anything that there's on Discovery Plus that I would watch anyway. So I watched. That's what I watched. My Finding Freedom, and then I, um, then I got rid of it for free. Uh, G.I. Joe Snake Eyes trailer drops. Between Mortal Kombat Snake Eyes and Shang-Chi, it seems like everyone wants Kung Fu Fighting. Uh, yeah, but I don't think anybody wants this movie. No, I, it looked real bad. I mean, it's just like, what? What about these G.I. Joe movies that they keep making them for? As someone who loved the G.I. Joe like cartoon. <laughs> yeah, and that's like the thing that's like, like genuinely distressing to me is I wasn't like a huge. Okay. Let me back up. I wasn't a huge GI Joe fan, but I also, but I did love Ninja Turtles and Transformers. And I just feel like that these properties that are so beloved from the eighties and the early nineties have just been so horribly disrespected by the things that they make uh, nowadays. Um, I'm re- There's a game coming out, uh, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game called like, um, Shredder's Revenge or something like that. It looks awesome. It looks so cool. It looks like an old Super Nintendo game with just like oh, super graphics. In, it just it looks great and it's like based on the old cartoons. Like that's what yes. we want. You know yes. what I mean? Like that's what we like if you made I, I guarantee you if you made something like that in the same vein with G.I. Joe, people would be on it. But like everybody yeah. makes fun of the Transformers stuff. And we talked about in the animated episode that we both have the Transformers animated movie in our top ten. Yes. But like Michael Bay does not get what makes Transformers cool. And those movies suck. Yep. They're terrible. They're ass. They suck ass. <laughs> They're and <real> bad. <laughs> it's just like like I guess like to me like the first one is is acceptable. Like the first one's acceptable. As a whole those movies are just garbage and it's just a, such a shame because that's such a cool property. And I think I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think it's the the same people who are making the the Ninja Turtles game made a um, made a Transformers game within the last I don't know five or six years. I think it was called Transformers Dev- Devastation, and it's it's so cool because it's that you know what I mean. It's the thing. It's it brings the nostalgia forward in a way that makes it cool, rather than bringing the nostalgia forward in a way that makes it a Michael Bay movie. Yeah, just, I just, I just he's such I, a I, shitty filmmaker. I'm just sorry. Just give me the Ninja Turtles Manhattan Project, you know? Well, That's the, all I the, want. The freaking the Ninja Turtle movies from the 90s are great. Yeah. Like, you could go back and watch those today. They're good. Like, yep. they're good. They represent the property well. Yep. But this shit that they keep putting out with both the, you know, the, the, uh, the G.I. Joe stuff and the Transformers stuff and the Ninja Turtle stuff. It's just the toy company licensed the movie and they're making a buck on it regardless. Like they don't care. You know what I mean? They're making their money. So it doesn't matter, but I just, it's just, it just pains me to see like these just beloved franchises just treated so disrespectfully. I I guarantee you, if you just give me, yeah, Shredder's Revenge looks cool. I'm definitely going to play it. I like, seriously put me in a room for like a, a couple months. And I, I have no, film writing experience whatsoever zero absolutely none and i guarantee you i could come up with something better for transformers than the just the hot garbage piles that michael bay puts out yeah i don't doubt it (laughs) and rant uh on the not garbage level of things uh ant-man 3 quantum mania begins filming it'll be fun i'm excited yeah yeah it'll it'll probably be funny Mm-hmm. And, and Paul Rudd's great. Totally. Yeah, Paul Rudd's great, and um, yeah, that's all you need to know. Paul Rudd's great. Look at us. Yeah. Huh? 
was, I was just Paul Rudd, his whole thing when he ate the wings. And he was just like so happy. Paul Never Rudd has looked 29 for the last 25 years. I've seen Paul Rudd in person. Have you? Yeah. Did you confront him about was it was it night or day? It was uh, nighttime. Of it was, course it was because he's a vampire. Yeah, well, it wasn't. It, I would say it was. Uh, it was dusk. Do- yeah, it was just like right before dusk. You wouldn't say dusk, but it wasn't daytime. And uh, no, there was a movie premiere thing. Okay. I wasn't. We were just going to see a movie, and then the same theater had it. And that's what happens when you're in LA. Is you'll just go to see a movie, and there's just a random movie premiere, and there's right. Paul Rudd, short guy. Just, really? I, yeah, I thought he'd be like my height, but he was definitely like two inches shorter than I am. Oh wow! But he, yeah, good smile. Yeah, he's, he's a Paul Rudd's great. Yeah. Uh, quick hitter time. Uh, Fury Files coming to Disney Plus Friday, uh, the day that this episode releases. Originally planned for last year's, it's an animated series designed to give background info on all of the heroes that we love. Not voiced by Samuel L. Jackson, so keep that. Ah, uh, yeah, that's too bad. Well, he's busy. I guess. Is he, though? He seems like he's always willing to do stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I can't say for sure that he's busy. Nah. Uh, <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres ends the show after the 2022 season. I saw she said she just doesn't find it challenging anymore. Right. So. It didn't have anything to do with all of the bad press she got about it being a toxic workplace. <laughs> no, nothing to do nothing with that. Nothing to do with that. No, nope. nothing to do, nothing with, to do with that. Just definitely, definitely just, it's not challenging anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Maybe it's not challenging to be called out on your shitty workplace practices. <laughs> Sounds like that should be a challenge. That's, uh, yikes. That would be a challenge. For uh, sure. This is us. It was a big show. It's a big show, but it'll end after its sixth season. It takes place I, in Pittsburgh. Yeah, at least parts of it. I haven't watched it. Um, I've heard it's really good. My wife's a big fan. Up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Milo, I'm glad, you know, what's his name, and then uh, Mandy Moore. Sterling okay, K. Brown. Sterling K. Brown. Yeah, I'm glad. Every time I see a show end before its ninth season, I'm always like, "You're doing a good job here," because Seinfeld went only nine seasons. You're not doing better than Seinfeld, anyone. It's all you need to know. So, uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple reboot with adults as contestants comes to CW. I want on this show. This I, is the push. This is the push. I want on it. Audition, Orange iguanas, send, purple parrots. Sign me the fuck up. Do it. Let's get Old you Mac. on there. That'd be awesome. That would really help I, the show. I, yeah. Well, it would help their show too. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't judge the size of the dog in the fight you have to judge the size of the fight in the dog that's right that's and right. i don't know that that's relevant at all to this conversation no but i want on that show so well, cw cw he wants on at bxg gmail.com i would love to be BXG. on any of these kind of shows there i'm just running i want around. on that show there's like a nostalgia piece of that i i love that yeah, show sure and, great show. Yeah, I'm really uh, looking forward to it. Ari- Ariana Grande married, I don't know, some fucking guy. That's basically all I need to know. Yeah, that's just so. Well, Kim know. Kardashian married Chris Humphries, so She did, yeah. Fun with science time. Bacteria found on Neanderthal's teeth show their love of carbs. Yeah. I can get down with that. I love carbs. I also have a love a of bunch carbs. carbs right before I did the show. Good for them. I wonder what kind of breads they were yeah. baking. How? Why? How can they? How can they know that? Yeah. Well, corn. I is guess a carb. like. Well, corn is um corn is a grain. A lot of people don't know that. It's not really a vegetable. Very granular. How do you know? Like, how do they? Like, I want to. How, uh, how are they able to determine food. that? Like sugar rot? I don't. I, I'm I mean, trying to read the article on it, and like, I and I and I read it. I'm reading it again. Yeah, like I've read it twice. Nerdist, I think. And I'm still not. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, they I mean, like carbs. Whatever. They didn't have any. They didn't no. have any weird no, fish stories this too week. Bad. So. <laughs> yeah, real bad. They're out there though. Yeah, bummer, dude. Three hundred ten hit points. Yeah, they sure are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool and all, but you know, I have. Where's he at? 
the shiny, the shiny cricketune. Cricketune. There he is, the cricketune. He's very shiny. Cricketune. Five dollars on eBay. Anyway, I'm probably like oh, I'm like playing. I'm sure my oils like, are just. I'm yeah. sure just my oils are completely just ruin it. Yeah, just someone's gonna be like, "You idiot! That the, card was worth five thousand dollars. Why you touch it with bare hands?" <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, uh, media recommendations for you this week. Uh, so you know, another Wednesday where I didn't work. Although I'm back on that Wednesday this week, so but whatever. I watched Screwball, which is a documentary about the baseball steroid scandal. It's hilarious. I recommend it because every time I do a flashback, they use children wearing suits. And if it's a baseball player, what? it's like a little kid in an Alex Rodriguez jersey or a little kid. Yeah, so they're always just... It's really funny. It's super funny. Uh, we watched it on Netflix. I, th- I said HBO Max, but I actually, it's it's Netflix. It's always confusing. But it's hilarious. Is it... That great? Mm, it's interesting. If you if you like baseball, you'll 100% be in. And you'll find it. If you don't yeah, like true. baseball, it's just funny. I, I mean, like, they're so kind of... Like, the fact that they're so delusional, these people that were involved with this, is hilarious to me. They're just like, oh, well, blah, blah, blah. You know, we got a messed up here and there. But they don't ever really admit the fact that, like, they were screwing with everybody and... So I think that's a definitely a watch for me. It was just hilarious, quick. Um, rewatched the town just because it was on. That's just a great Boston movie. A little, you know, yeah, that's, bang, a good one. that's just Ben Affleck. Yeah, Ben Affleck. You know, it's Jeremy Renner. Yeah, it's just it's just a fun Boston movie. Um, Flushed away, which was really funny. Um, it's an animated movie. It gets it's about a goldfish. No, that'd be funny oh. too if they did it that way. But uh, no, it's just a good, cute animated movie. Uh, I would recommend that. And then we got into these witches movies because uh, Janie's dad said, hey, you guys can put wallpaper up. Just don't make anything goth. So we decided to go goth with our movies this week and watch The Craft, which is, which is fun. 90s, very 90s movie. Um, if you like 90s weirdness, The Craft's good. And then probably the best movie we watched this week was The Witches of Eastwick. Which is this is why I left it for last because it's got Jack Nicholson, Cher, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Susan Sarandon. That pretty much is all you need to know from the '80s. So it's like peak, peak level for the ladies there. And Jack Nicholson is just always Jack Nicholson in every movie. So that's uh, that's my media recommendations. What do you have, Brenton? I have I've been like I don't I know you watch like a lot of YouTube like baking baking things yes. and my octopus teacher or whatever that horrific situation is <clears throat> but i've been like watching just like this week i've been watching like some youtube interviews like gaming stuff like that um nothing major um this guy david jaffe he's got a pretty good youtube channel he was the creator of twisted metal and god of war nice and so he has like different people come on and he talks a lot of shit he's real blunt about things so i've been watching like that and i've been getting back into that game uh immortals Phoenix Rising, which is a really dumb name for a game, but I've kind of found like the sweet spot with it where I actually like like playing it. It kind of took me a long time to get in, but moving along on that, um, the main thing though is I've been listening to the new Weezer album. Ah, cool. I've listened to it probably like three or four times through, and I am here to tell you that it is perfectly fine. <laughs> That's basically been Weezer for the past 20 years. Yeah. Perfectly fine. Yeah. It's perfectly fine. Yeah, Weezer is... Like, here's the thing, though, is that I feel like of all the, like, rock stars that I would want to hang out with, I think that Rivers Cuomo is actually at the top of the list because he's just, like, really dry and sarcastic with his lyrics, and I think that's probably how he is as a person, and that's how I am as a person, so I think that we would mesh well. Like, it'd be really cool to hang out with Flea, but, but he's, like... A lot of energy. I don't know, 55, 60, and I don't know that I can match his energy. It'd be tough. 20 years younger than him. Um, you know, some other guys, whatever. Brandon Boyd, probably be really cool to hang out with. I don't do drugs and paint, so. But I can, like, get down with a really snarky joke. You know what yeah. I mean? And, like, I feel like that's where, and that's where Weezer's best is, like, when he's being, like, really, like, kind of, like, snarky with the lyrics and stuff like that. And there's definitely some of that on here. It's a little bit more hard rock than there's another band. I don't know if they're in the Hall of Fame, but they definitely. Uh, they're in. They're in. Um, yeah, they. But be insane. They're not. 
you know, there there's some good songs. It's like more it's like way more hard rock than they're usually a tribute to. Yeah. And like Weezer hard rock is not exactly like Mastodon, as you said earlier. You know what I mean? It's just it's just not it's just a little bit heavier than Buddy Holly, basically, or Saving So or whatever. But I I, mean, I was really trying to think of like what rock star I would want to hang out with. I don't know. Like yeah. actual rock. Like we're not gonna go into like with the pot you know, the mix of I was like legitimately thinking, Oh, Mark Hoppus. I would hang out with Mark Hoppus from Blink one eighty two. From Blink one eighty two. I think he'd be a good hang. Yeah. He's pretty funny. Maybe. I think he'd be a good right. observational guy. Like if you're driving along yeah. and yeah, no, I think he'd be a good good hang. Yeah, I just said yeah, like I said, I think Rivers Cuomo would just be like real shitty and Oh stuffy. sure. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That's definitely my wheelhouse. But I I mean, if you like Weezer, I'd definitely recommend it. It's not like it's not the blue album, but what is? Sure. You know? So, but other than that, not a whole lot. Oh, I started, I, I, I should say that I, I haven't gotten to around, around to um, the Macho Man documentary that I talked about last week, but I did watch the first half hour or so of Jupiter's Legacy that was recommended by uh, David S. from Carn City. I don't know that it's for me. It just, it just didn't grab me. And I asked him, I was like, how... How many episodes before this gets good? <laughs> he's like, I don't know, like four, he's like four or five. And I'm like, you have like, you've got like two episodes to grab yeah. me. And if you don't, that's it. You know what I mean? The boys had me. And that's what it felt like. Jupiter's legacy felt like kind of like a generic version of the boys. And the boys had me in the first 10 seconds. Like, well, like the first minute, nice. like the very first minute of the first episode, something happens. And I was like, that's crazy. I'm in. I, I may give it another shot. I'm not sure. Uh, Josh Dumel's in it. And he's like the same person as Timothy Oliphant. Yeah, they are the same. They look so much alike <laughs> yeah. that it's like I had to look up to see which one it was. I don't know. I might, I might get back into it. I may not. I'm not sure. Either way, the XG podcast publishes every 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fridays, 4 a.m. Pacific, 2 a.m. Hawaiian. Aloha. On podcast services around the globe, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. What time does it come out Amazon. in England? We should probably know that. Um, like noon? Noon. I think they're like five hours. Hello. Of, had a, yeah. Hello, governor. Yeah, t- well, there goes that. <laughs> there goes that audience. <laughs> Apologies. Um <laughs> That just totally derailed my train of thought. Uh, social media, BXG Podcast, uh, Facebook.com slash BXG Podcast, YouTube, BXG Podcast. Uh, the YouTube thing is, I would say, I, I wouldn't say that it's taking off, um, but there's way more. I mean, I did four videos this week um, as far as, you know, we did uh, like the Bad Batch is going to be ongoing and the movies are always going to be up there. And then there's always going to be one or two. Well, the, the card opening is definitely, definitely going to be on there. Oh yeah. You know, and I think that that's something that, that we're going to work on as far as like having like kind of like funnier, zanier things that we do that will play well with YouTube. But I think that um, definitely check it out and, you know, I think that I personally, I think the videos have gotten a lot better since I started doing them to now. So, um, you know, and there's some funny stuff over there as well, but, uh, definitely check that out and, uh, rate, subscribe, share, recommend us to friend, recommend us, you know, tell your mates. Yeah. Tell your, mate, tell your mate. mates, tell, tell your blokes, your blokes. Tell, you know, that's not English. That's Australian no. mates is too. I feel like they say mate. In, they probably, I mean, well, know. Australia isn't even real it's just argentina they tell people yeah what? Uh. that's not that's not true <laughs> um you've never heard that conspiracy theory where like no, uh, no. you should look it up no, it's pretty funny that can't be do you know who do you know what we need to get on here as a guest we need to get a flat earther oh my god i would love it yes Let's do it. that would be the best let's thing get ever. kyrie irving on we have to tell your friends tell your families tell your mothers about the unmistakable essence of BSG podcast. Thanks for Take listening. Care.